Shavu Tov, Agutavoch, and welcome to our program. Tonight is Mitzvah Shabbos Kedesh, Yud Aleph Nisan, the birthday of the Rebbe. We will discuss today the first Fadbringen of the Rebbe that's known on Yud Aleph Nisan. But first, Rabbi Say, our customary story that leads to the Fabringen of Yud Aleph Nisan. Our family came to Paris, 1947, on Beis Nisan. The Rebbe came a week earlier on Chof Vov Odel. And uh, the Rebbe would come to see his mother. She stayed in the house of Rebbe Zalman Schneelson, the same house that we uh, then came into. And he would visit his mother two times every single day. At first, um... The Rebbe Sanchana had, there was a big house, and uh, they had three floors. The Rebbe Sanchana had, her place was downstairs on the second floor. But to the best of our knowledge, she did not have a private room. When we came, Bayes Nissan, we were given the, uh, the apartment on the third floor that had three rooms. It had a dining room and two bedrooms on the side and a small kitchen. And we dedicated one of those rooms to the Rebbe Tzanchana. And for all the years that we were in Paris, seven years until 1954, that room was called the Rebbe Tzanchana Simmel, the, team, the room of the Rebbe Tzanchana. That room had a special design, and we see now by divine pre- uh, providence, by Shgacha Pelotis, had an entrance from the dining room, it held that, and also had a straight entrance to the hallway. And down the hallway, maybe 20, 25 feet, was a shul. And the Rebbe Sanchana frequented the shul. The Rebbe davened in the shul every Shabbos and so on. But to get to this story, uh, we came to Nisan. My father's birthday is the Shredesh Nisan. So he came over to the Rebbe and he said to the Rebbe, Rav Shnelson, this is how the Rebbe was called in this phase, uh, when you spoke about the Rebbe, everybody would say the Ramash, the Rosh Tevis of the Rebbe's name. But when you spoke to the Rebbe himself, and you addressed the Rebbe, it was Rav Schneelson. And he said, Rav Schneelson, my Yemoledes is the Shreda Schneelson, and he's asking for a Beloche. So uh, the Rebbe said to him, just want to be sure that I repeat it uh, uh, Correctly, the Rebbe said to him, although my father used to tell the story many times, I want to be sure I repeat it correctly. The Rebbe said to him, um, is, uh, from welchen Jahr seid ihr? What year were you born? And my father answered, he was born Tophelis Samach Beis, excuse me, Tophelis Samach Gimel, 1903. And the Rebbe says, Unich bin von Tophili Samach Beis. And I was born Tophili Samach Beis. And then the Rebbe says, You seid von Nissen. You seid geboren in Nissen. Ich bin nicht von Nissen. And when my father would tell the story, which means you are born in the month of Nissen, I'm also born in the month of Nissen. And when my father would tell the story, he would say that he asked um, very, very respectfully, he asked, Men can fragen when? Can we ask when? The Rebbe said that he was born in Nissen. So the Rebbe answered, Yud Aleph, on Elf Tegayo, the Zogimil de Mazel Mikapitel. That my birthday, the Rebbe said, is his birthday is on the 11th day of Nissen, and 11 days a year we say the same capital. Probably the first time that the Rebbe revealed the date, his birthday, that year in Tovshin Zion. There were several chassidim then in in Paris, and my father told the story to the chassidim that Rav Shneelson, he asked for Rav and and he said that his birthday is on the 11th day of Nisan. This part of the story I heard from Rav Nocham Avrom Yakubovich, Zichrenu Livrocho, who was there at every Fabringen of the Rebbe, that when he and some other chassidim, not many, four, five, six chassidim heard that 
the Rebbe's birthday is on the 11th of Nisan, and since the Rebbe would come to see his mother twice every day, the second time about 7 o'clock in the evening, so for 7 o'clock in the evening, they, they, they were also there. The Rebbe and his mother would meet in our dining room. My mother, Lea Sholem, has probably told them the story, would serve them uh, tea and cake and so on. This, this day, Yudal of Nisan, they came into the dining room right after the Rebbe came in to see his mother. When the Rebbe saw the Chassidim, this is what Rebbe Nachum Avalom Yaakovovich said, she said to one of them, she saw they were there, so she figured they were, they were there for a purpose. She says to them, Men of Betten, the Mizun Fadbelengen, you should ask my son to bring Haitis a Yemu Ledis. His Yemu Ledis is today. The Mnuchem Avlom Yakubovich used to speak a, a Hungarian German Yiddish. And he said, The Rebbe hat sich bald gesetzt. The Rebbe sat down immediately. As the moment uh, one of those chsidim said to the Rebbe, maybe he would bring, the Rebbe sat down immediately. The Rebbe hat sich bald gesetzt. And what did the Rebbe say? The Rebbe said that we find Yim Huledes, we find one time in Chumash. And we find Yim Huledes as Pali. And Lechayla, that's not something that we should emulate. We should do a Fabringen for Toy Yim Huledes because Pali did that. that. That is not something from Pali that we should emulate. And that's not a Pali from what we know of Pali. We should not do anything that he did. And the Rebbe answers, as it says in Chesidus, that there's the Pali, the Lumase, and there's the Pali, the Gdusho. There's the Pali from the other side, the other side of the side of holiness. That's the Pali that is known to us. The Pali who, was, uh, who oppressed the Jews and so on. That's the Pali, the Lumase, the Pali from, 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 from the opposite side of Gdusho. But it, according, uh, the current, uh, in, in, in to to on the, on the other on the other side um, to, to correspond to the Pali the the Lumaze, there's a Pali the Gdusho. That's the Zelu Umaze, that's the other side of the coin. And that's a Pali the Gdusho, a Pali of holiness. And this is why when we get together on a, on a birthday, it's because of the Pali the Gdusho. Not the Pali that we know, that's the Pali the Lumaze. But we get together because of the Pali the Gdusho. That's what the Rebbe said, and it's probably the first recorded Fadblingen of Yudal of Nissen, and it happened, Yudal of Nissen, Tovshin Zion, in Paris. Behanagea to, to Pesach, were a few days before Pesach, as we all know. In, in the Haggadah, the first Pisco of the Haggadah, which means the first part of the Haggadah after the son or the sons and the children ask, they feel cautious. Parenthetically, or maybe not so parenthetically, the Rebbe said to many people by dollars, the Rebbe said to them, Did you already prepare the, the tellers for the four cautious? And a lot of people took it that the Rebbe was being nice to them. Basically, what the Rebbe was saying, the child prepares for the fear kashas. And you see it. You see it, Baruch Hashem. You see the teachers of the little boys, of the little girls, and the teachers are very innovative. And every year they come up with new ways of how to ask the fear kashas. And it takes them a long time, Baruch Hashem. It takes a long time, but they are very well prepared for the fear kashas. But then the father has to answer. So in many cases, present company, of course, excluded. Uh, the father just says, that is of other, you know, and he's already tired and he wants to continue with the Seder. And, and there's nothing much that he answers. Basically, if the son asks a question, and now there was an added line that everybody says, he's the beat to give me the tellets or a tilts. What does the father answer? He says under his nose, what am I, you know, the father of which time he continues. And the Rebbe wanted to tell some parents that they have to, to answer. Moreover, the chiyuv, the obligation for the child to ask the field conscious is not there, I say, it doesn't say in Chumash. 
Yes, it's a huge Jewish meaning, it's bad gibrach. However, the vehigadat olevincho, the obligation from the father to the son, says in Chumash, that, we, that the father has an obligation. So it comes out without getting into, into detail that the, 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 the meaning for the children to ask if the kashas is done with great fanfare and circumstance. And the children prepare, and their teachers on Zangizund prepare, and the kinders on Zangizund, everybody prepares so nicely. And you see innovation from year to year, how they, how they ask and how they prepare all the simonim of the, of the, of the kaila. However, when it comes to the Yeraisev, he got it all of Incho, so the Rebbe told several parents, uh, let's record it, Shinsuge Giridim Teretz of the Field Conscious. In the Teretz of the Field Conscious, in the first Pisco of the Teretz, where the father has to answer, he says, We were slaves to Pali Mitzrayim. And right after that, he says like this. And if Almighty God would not have taken us out from Egypt, so we and our children, our grandchildren, we would be enslaved to Palim in Mitzrayim. What is the depth of those words? And what do they come? Why do they come immediately, right in the first piece, called in the beginning? And the explanation to that is that sometimes there's a kid who asks the kashas. We call him a kid. He's a Jewish kid, Baruch Hashem. And sometimes he's a little strong. Sometimes he comes and he says, Dad, I don't know how to, what, to, what to say, but what's this all about? For eight days, for eight days, we can't, we can't eat chomets. We have to eat matzah, this hard bread. We can't eat what we want. And you tell us a story that 3,000 years ago, this and this happened. So for 3,000 years ago, if something happens, we can commemorate it. Well, for a few minutes, we can sit down and we can have a cup of wine. For seven or for eight days? And I'll tell you a secret, Dad. I don't know if you're going to like to hear it. My friends don't like matzah and wine. My friends... My friends like pizza and beer. And here we are stuck with this hard bread, with this wine that we don't like for eight days. And we're doing all of the things to commemorate. We could have done it one, two, three. The father here has to answer the child something. So the child, to get him out of his complacency, he shouldn't be able to say, listen, this is something that happened years ago to Grandpa, and we're old-fashioned, and come on, Dad, we're out of Russia already. This is the United States of America. Smell the coffee. So the father has to say something strong to get this kid to think and to think right. So he says to him, listen here, my son. You are telling me that this is something that happened to Grandpa years ago. But I have news for you. This does not happen only to Grandpa. It happened to Grandpa too. It happened to you. Because if the Almighty God would not have taken us out of Mitzrayim, then we would be in Mitzrayim today. Yes, today you're a big chochem because you drive my Porsche on, on Park Avenue 75 miles an hour. But I have something to tell you, my son. If not for that day, you wouldn't be driving the Porsche. You would be driving a camel in, in the desert of Sinai or in the desert of Egypt. That's what you would have done today, if not for God, that you took us out of Mitzrayim. So it's not that we are commemorating Grandpa's uh, liberation. We are celebrating your celebration, your, your freedom. And this is why the Balagoda put, did it, put it in in the first Pisco. We would have been in Mitzrayim. And as it says later, He took us out, not only our great-grandfathers. We would have been in Mitzrayim today. This is the message to, to the child. I heard the story, a good Pesach story that a Jew lived 
next to next to a Gentile in a shtetl. And he made a lot of noise on Pesach. After that, the the, the Gentile says to him, you know, you, Mishka, Mishka, the Jewish name, you were making so much noise the whole night, I couldn't sleep. You were making noise and noise and noise. And at the end of the night, you were screaming. I thought that the ceiling is coming down. Mishka, what happened there? He says, yeah. What were you screaming? He doesn't want to tell him. He says, don't want to tell him. I'm a neighbor of yours. I was screaming, Lashono Habo Birushalayim. Next year I'm going to be in Jerusalem. Oh, yeah? Next year you're going to be in Jerusalem? And he thinks to himself, that's pretty good news. We'll get rid of this guy once and for all. Let him go to Jerusalem. Who needs him here? Okay. Comes next year. And the Jew screams again, Lashono Habo Birushalayim. The walls are trembling. And his neighbor says to him next day, Mishka, what did you scream yesterday? He says, I was screaming, I'm going to be in Yerushalayim next year. And the Gentile says, but you said that last year. You said last year you were screaming going to Jerusalem. And you didn't go. He says, yeah, but this year I'm going. Okay, no problem. He tells all his friends, if you see a moving truck, you should know this what this is what it is. My neighbor is moving out. He is going to Jerusalem. Thank God. Comes the third year. The Jew sits by Mseder. And he has to say, And he lifts his eyes towards the heavens. And he says, And he says, I'm embarrassed for the Gentile. What am I going to tell him? They tell a story of Esai. I'm not going to keep you long at Seder Pesach. A Jew was working for a non-Jew in the firm, a big firm. So he asked the boss to come to his to his Pesach Seder. Um, he doesn't want to. And he goes, he's going to do it. A Jewish Seder is not for him. So he says to him, but you should know that my wife is a very good cook. And we cook special food for Pesach. It has every, every good taste in the world. This fellow, Fred, let's call the boss, asked around, and they told him, you know, the, the Jewish women are good cooks. They know how to cook. They know their work. You'll enjoy the meal very much. Comes to the meal. And he hasn't eaten a few hours before because he's going to get a nice meal. So he comes to the meal. First, they make Kiddush, and they make speeches, and then they have a cup of wine. If you get okay, you know, on a pair of teeth before the meal, you have a cup of wine, so you should eat better. Okay. After that, you start with speeches. Every child makes a speech. The father makes a speech. He says, he is hungry, and these Jews are making speeches. Finally, finally, um, he is waiting. They take, oh, even from the beginning, they take a piece of onion, would you believe this? They take a piece of onion, they dip the piece, the piece of onion in salt water, and they eat it. Then they give him a piece of onion, eats it. Bitter onion, this is not the meal he was thinking of. And then they take these bitter herbs, and they, they which is a lot, and they eat them, and they gave him some of these bitter, bitter herbs. He started eating the bitter herbs, don't ask. He started coughing. He, he never felt so much. He, he thought he was going to have to, uh, to, 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 to call an ambulance. Uh, he can't take it anymore. And if it's not enough that he has to eat these bitter herbs until his face is red and he can't, and he's coughing and he can't breathe, now they put it. Again, now they put it in a sandwich. They tell you a story with Hillel. They have to put it in a sandwich again. So again, he has to eat this hard bread. 
And he asked Eid that these can't take it anymore. He says, thank you very much. It was nice seeing you. He leaves. And next day he calls a friend of him. He says, the same friend who told him he should go. He says, listen, I went, but don't ask what I had. First they gave me this wine that I didn't like, and then they made me eat these onions, and then the bitter herbs, and then the hard bread with herbs. Come on, give me a break. This is what you said. They're good cooks. So the fellow says to him, Fred, you should have waited another 10 minutes, and you would have been, you would have been privy to the meal, the best meal you ever had, the best fish you ever had the best meat you ever have. Leave it up to the Jewish cooks. You just left before the big, the big meal. The Moshal is, we're in Golos. And the Golos is not easy. Hard bread. Hard bread is like in Tupanose. Hard bread, it's not easy. Bitter herbs. Not everything works the way we want. We want more nachas here, more nachas here. Not easy. The message is, is, don't give up. There is a big meal. There's a big sude. There's the sude of Dovid Malke Meshich. There's the big meal that's coming our way with Leviyos, with Mashiach and Leviyos and Anshayel Abol. It's coming our way. So although it's a little bitter in the Golos, and we understand that, but let's sit through, because we know that we're going to come to the big meal. And let's not give up. Let's not give up now. We already experienced Chof Zayin Odod and then the second Chof Zayin Odod, and Gimel Tamuz, and we didn't give up. And let's not give up now, because we are getting there, and we're getting to that big meal of Leviosen and Sheila Bol and the Sude of Mashiach, together with the Rebbe, Gesundheit und Friedrich Heid.